how we make and use energy. So, welcome to our live from the lab. As part of the science festival, we're going to be showing you around the lab over the next four days. So feel free to send us in any questions that you would like us to answer. And then, yeah, hopefully you'll see a bit about what the inside of the lab looks like and you'll learn some more about the experiments that we do. So first of all, today we're going to go over to Tamla and Tamla's going to show us about one of the pieces of equipment that she uses in the lab. Hi, Emily. Hi, Tamla. Hi. Hi. Good, thank you. Yes. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Um, so as Emily said, I'm going to be talking about a piece of equipment uh, that we use in the lab. And this is a 3D printer, um, which is becoming more and more popular uh, to have in the lab, mainly because it's quite cheap, um, relatively easy to use, and it allows a lot of flexibility. So you can print something um, in three dimensions, which is exactly how you want it to be. Um, so these are just some examples of things that I have printed. So we've got um, a gel casting uh, thing, which is basically like a little wall, which I need for some of my experiments. I've got a tube rack, and this is actually one of my favorite things because since last year, we've all had to adjust and wear masks in the lab. And so I printed some ear savers, which we could use. And this is my favorite because um, our 3D printer, which you'll see soon, actually only prints with one color, but I managed to get two different colors out of it. <laughs> so what is a 3D printer? Well, it's basically a machine which allows you to create something that is physical from something that is digital. And it does this by um, melting a bit of plastic and placing it layer by layer of each other to build something that is physical. Um, so now I'm going to go over and show you the 3D printer. So you might wonder how the 3D printer works. Well, this is the 3D printer that we have and it's currently on and printing. Uh, so there are several important parts that I'd like to show you. So the material that we use is a plastic tubing and that is put at the back over here and that is fed through this tube which is melted by the nozzle which is this part here um, and as it's melted it's put down onto the build plate layer by layer and that is what allows it to create something in three dimensions um, the build plate can move up and down as it's printing and the nozzle can move left and right so that allows it to go in all different directions and build it exactly the shape that you want um, and over here we've got the SD card slot and that is where we feed in the information that the machine needs in order to know exactly what we want to print so that's the printer and now I'm going to go over and show you exactly how we can design our prints so that we can tell the printer what we want it to do Thank you, Tamina. That was so interesting. So now we're going to learn about how Tamina designs the prints for the printer on the computer. We are able to design um, exactly what we want to print using different softwares. Uh, there are lots available and some are actually free and quite easy to use. Um, and some of them you don't even have to download. You can use it on your browser. So the one that I like to use um, is Stickercad. Uh, that's this one here. So you might have used something like paint to draw or edit pictures. This is quite similar, but it takes it to another level. So you're adding another dimension to it, which means that it's going to be more of an object rather than something flat. So rather than using something like circles and squares, you would be using something like spheres and cubes. And what you do is just drag over these objects and you can tell it exactly the size that you want by typing that in um, and then you can add these objects one on top of the other and join them together stretch them out um, however you like um, and then save it in a format which will allow the printer to understand um, what it needs to print um, so that's one of the final things that you need to do in order to print um, you can also find prints online that other people have designed and save that um, so that you don't even have to design it yourself because someone might have already done it. <laughs> so um, thank you so much for listening uh, 
to me talk about the 3D printer and I'm happy to take as many questions as you have and try to answer them as best as I can. Thank you, Tamina. That was so interesting. We, I definitely learned a lot and I'm sure you all did too. Um, so we've had a question already submitted from Ellie, who's nearly 10, and Ellie asks, what's your favourite experiment? Hi Ellie, um, I, think I like lots of different experiments, um, but I think one of my favourite ones is actually looking at DNA, because that's one of the things that makes every person different, um, and so looking at that is really interesting, because you can try to understand what makes us different. Great, thanks, I'm going to see you soon. Bye, bye. So now we're going to find out more about how we make lots of copies of DNA in the lab. So to do that, we're going to go and find another scientist called Milan. He's over here. Hi Milan, how are you? Hi Emily, I'm very good, well. Good, Can you tell us what you're up to today? Sure. I'm just setting up uh, some bacterial cultures. Um, you might have heard about DNA and that we need to grow it up. Um, and often, for in science, for that we use bacteria. And you might wonder why, why use bacteria in human research of human uh, bodies. But actually, bacteria, these little guys, growing in these tubes. You see, it's a bit cloudy. Um, are very good at dividing. They divide about once in every 20 minutes. Um, so if you leave them overnight, you will get a lot of millions and millions of bacteria and so much DNA. So they are very useful for us to study genes and destructions of genes. But how do we actually grow them? So we grow them on these plates. These plates have a bit of agar in something you can find in cello infused with a lot of other nutrients, proteins, and stuff that basically bacteria can grow on. But also, apart from bacteria, fungi, and a lot of other things we don't want can grow on them. So whenever working with these, we need to turn our Bunsen burner on. The, the Bunsen burner, what it does is actually it brings the warm air up, creates a draft, so when I then open my plates, all the spores and floating particles are brought up, not in my plates. So now I can actually work with them. So what I will do is now I will plate um, these bacteria um, onto the plates. One additional thing to add is that these plates contain um, an antibiotic, so a compound that will kill all the bacteria, except the ones that have received an additional piece of DNA. Those are in this tube, the second tube. The first tube, they are bacteria by themselves. They haven't received anything. So when we actually spread them on this plate, they're probably all going to die. It's just a control. The other ones, however, they carry the DNA of our interest. And a part of the DNA is something that will protect them. These are here. So, basically, they should be able to survive and actually grow quite well. I just put one drop. And again, spread these all around the plate. Now we can take these to the 37 degree incubator and see what happens overnight. So here is our 37 degree incubator. Here are plates with the colonies plated. And we would now place these here and leave them there um, overnight. However, we don't have that much time now, so I prepared some place yesterday that I can show you today where I've done exactly the same. And we can see what happened to those plates. So, here we have our pure bacteria culture without any DNA, with the resistance added, without the help of genes. And you can see 
that we don't see anything on this plate. It's completely empty. Now to compare, we have a plate here where we've added the DNA, the antibiotic resistance. And you can here see tiny spots. And these spots are colonies, groups of thousands of bacteria that now carry the DNA that we need. And we can now place these in a bigger culture, in half a liter culture and grow a loads of DNA that we'll then use in our experiments. And here, an additional fun fact, you might know that bacteria grow also in our hands and our body. So when I took a plate without any antibiotic, with just um, agar or cello kind of substance, you can see that the next day we also see a growth. So these are actually bacteria from your or my skin that you'll find growing there in time. So just another reason to wash your hands before you eat. Great, thank you so much for that. That was so interesting. Um, so I have a question for you. Um, I was just wondering, why did you put everything into the flame before you threw it in the bin? So bacteria, as I told you, are very good at growing. So if we don't take care and don't get rid of them properly, they might start overgrowing in the sewage or in the nature. And these are often not good things. So actually by placing the tip in the flame, we should kill all these bacteria and prevent the spread outside of the lab. That makes sense, thank you. We definitely don't want to be spreading any bacteria. <laughs> um, so we've also had another question sent in to us from Sona. Um, so Sona was wondering, Milan, why did you want to be a scientist? So for me, science was really just a way to understand life better. I've always been fascinated by nature, by animals and by my own body. And molecular biology, or in general was a way for me to understand more. The other thing is that I was very excited about prolonging our lives and the possibility of longevity and that was one of the passions that brought me into science. Yeah. What about yourself? Well, I guess it's a similar answer. I always was really interested to learn more about how everything works, both inside our body and in the world. <laughs> Um, and also one of the great things about science is that you spend all day every day trying to discover new things and that's very exciting to discover things that have not, not been known before new things um, so yeah really exciting yeah it's also very fun to be doing experiments in the lab <laughs> um, so yeah i think that's all from us today um, but thank you so much for watching live from the lab at the institute of metabolic sciences we hope you enjoyed it and that you learned a lot um, Remember to tune in again for the rest of the week and you'll be meeting different researchers in the Institute for Metabolic Sciences and they'll all be showing you different experiments and pieces of equipment that they use in the lab on an everyday basis. Remember to keep, to keep submitting your questions to us and we'll be happy to ask anything and everything. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. See you soon. Bye.